nice to be in your home again. Welcome to church. Children's Day celebration was exciting, wasn't it? I'm sure you enjoyed it. It's another beautiful Sunday morning. Do you really know what makes you royals? You are royals not because you belong to a church or that you attend a church, but because you belong to the kingdom of God. Friends, if you've not yet asked Jesus to come into your life as your friend, don't worry, the door is still open. Before we continue service for today, please let us pray. Father, we thank you for everything. Thank you for today's service because we believe that we are going to have an amazing service. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will guide our hearts, that everything that is taught us will understand and put it into practice. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for everything you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Enjoy the service. I know you have neighbors, you have people everywhere, but these few minutes, just, just focus on Jesus and lift your heart and I just want us to have communion with Jesus. Sing it for yourself tonight. Sing it. Savior. Call him Savior. Savior. One more time. Call him your Savior. Savior. The man you saved. Come to worship you. That's why I came. The man you say has come to worship. You. Can somebody call him helper? Help helper. Jesus has ever helped you say the man you helped helped has come to worship say the man you helped has come to worship if he has ever healed you in this place say healer healer somebody is if he has ever healed you call him
a second chance The ones who gave your grace The ones you saved The ones you redeemed Oh, 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 oh. This boy you said Came to worship you I'm just a little boy and I came to worship you. Say it in your own words. Make it personal. The man you say. Hello, friends. It's time for our royalty nuggets. Our nuggets for the month of June are things to know and avoid as a child of God. Part one, and we'll be starting off with avoiding the occult. The occult is everything from horoscopes or stars to fortune telling, medium practice, witchcraft, and Satan worship. What does God say concerning this? Do not go to mediums or wizards for advice, they will only make you unclean. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 19 verse 31 Don't try to learn what will happen in the future by talking to a fortune teller or by going to a magician or witchcraft or sorcerer. Don't let anyone try to put magic spells on other people. Don't let any of your people become a medium or a wizard and no one should try to talk with someone who has died. These things the Lord hates anyone who does them. Deuteronomy 18 verses 10 to 12. But those who do evil magic, they will have a place in the lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Revelations 21 verse 8. Beloved, be God's fool. That's the path to true wisdom. What the world calls smart, God calls stupid. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 18, message translation. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hello friends, good to be with you here today. My name is Abibo. We're going to look at a topic, very interesting topic today, the King's Invitation. What would you do? What would be your response to information about something you cannot actually explain, but you have a strong conviction about? Over 2,000 years ago, there was a distinguished member of his society. He was an exceptional man, a learned man of the law, and belonged to a supreme council and was highly respected and regarded. He heard about a certain young man who actually made wave in the city, but he didn't consider him to be something different or anything because this young man was just like one ranting, not until fellow learned colleagues and fellow learned men like him began to pay attention and talk a lot about this man. What were they saying that made them angry? They said he was healing the sick on a Sabbath day. Not just that, he laid his hand on the lepers, those dirty stinking people, and they got healed. But that was not all. He had the F13 to forgive sin. Although he couldn't quite explain it, he perceived that this young man would be saying the truth. He represents the truth. So he decided to investigate and know more about him secretly. What did he do? One of the cool evenings, he decided to pay him a visit so he could know for first hand what exactly the message of this man was and who he really represents. We can find that in John chapter 3 from verse 1 to 7. John chapter 3, 1 to 7. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? 
Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Wow! Did you notice something? That the young man that this scripture was talking about is who? Jesus. And the learned man that the scripture talked about is Nicodemus, who was also a leader. And the person Jesus was preaching about is the kingdom of God. There are a few things we have seen in that scripture that I want to highlight to you. Nicodemus was shocked that he was not qualified to be part of God's kingdom by becoming a Pharisee or keeping the laws of Moses. He realized that having been born of the flesh by his parents do not qualify him. What qualifies him is to receive Jesus as his Lord and Savior, which is done by the person of the Holy Spirit in him. He also realized that when he receives Jesus, he has a new DNA. He's no longer part of the old DNA of the first Adam, but now he's part of the DNA of Jesus. He saw Jesus as the king and he welcomed him because that's the invitation that leads everyone who believes to Christ. You are royalties today because you belong to the family of God. And this is because you've accepted the invitation of the king. Accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior had made you a royalty. And guess what? In this world, you are prayed as kings and as children of God. For whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Let's look at the truth in this scriptures. There are truths in the scriptures we always listen to and read. The first truth is the kingdom of God is not mandatory. It's not compulsory. You have a choice. I have a choice to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and to be part of this kingdom. Number two, the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. Flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God. That's why you need to be born again to be part of this kingdom. Number three, Different people say different things, give you different reasons why they've not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. No matter the reasons they give, guess what? Those reasons are lies from the devil. He wants to deceive them and deprive them of this eternal life. Number four, it's not old fashioned as a young person not to follow Jesus. In fact, I always say this, Jesus is the trending person. Jesus is a trend that never fades away. I'd like us to look at our memory verse in John chapter 14 verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except to me. So Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, and Jesus is the life. Before we go, I'd like us to look at this question. Let me ask you a question. What is the difference between someone who has become born again, that's born twice, who had received Jesus, and someone who isn't born again? Do you know the difference? Let me tell you. The person who is not born again is still a slave to sin under the control of Satan. But the person who is born again is part of God's family, is a heir of the Father, joint heir with the Son, is a son of the kingdom. He has dominion over sin and dominion over Satan. So the day you got born again, you came into dominion. And that's why you're created. You're created with dominion and for dominion. I have a home play for you today. What's my home play for you? Number one, is the king's invitation still open? Of course it is, but you can find that in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 8, or check in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Number two, home play. What are some benefits of being born again? I'm so excited being born again because I've seen a lot of benefits. You can find yours in John chapter 1, verse 12. You can also look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. If you want more, you can look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. And finally, what are the things you have seen in the scriptures? Share your love story with us. I'd like to show you that home play again. Look at Hebrews chapter 3, verse 8. 
and then you're going to see if the king's invitation is still open this is how to connect your friends to the king's invitation and look at john chapter 1 verse 12 i like that scripture because i quote it every day what are some benefits you get from that when you see these things you realize that being born again is the new trending it's never old it never fades away i'm going to see you some other time next week we'll meet with you i love you god loves you Amazing, right? I'm sure you enjoyed service today. I did. You can follow us on our YouTube channel or you join our Telegram community. You can also download your quiet time. Don't forget your home place. We have amazing ones for you. And also follow through your nuggets for the week. Friends, in case you have any questions, please call, text, or even WhatsApp the numbers you're seeing on the screen. Don't forget your royals. Go and conquer your world. Bye.